and we need to make it out of Waco. Like, we have to make it out of Waco. Like, we have yeah. to, we have to, we have to, we have to. One of my goals, you know, you have, like, full control of, like, who you spend your time with mm -hmm. and, and who you want to be around with. Everybody wants to get out of their hometown. Yeah. So, for me, Waco is not my hometown. Dude, Waco is booming. There is so much opportunity in Waco. Like, so if there was ever a time to be in Waco, I feel like it is now. It's not that I'm, like, that there's small-minded, like, people here. I'm afraid of the judgment. Like, for that's sure, that's yeah. my argument. If you go to Austin, you don't know nobody, so you feel free. Uh, judge it's like a free, new start. Like, right? Yeah. But here in Waco, you know your friends, your family. They're going to judge you every second, every moment they see your content or, mm -hmm. or yourself. Like, hey, how's that podcast going? The reality is, like, the negativity doesn't ever go away. The judgment's never going to go away. I was just like, man, I don't want people to think this way. I don't want them to think that they need to leave their hometown to to, to go be somebody. <clears throat> hey, guys, welcome to the False Night Podcast here with episode 116. The best show soon to be. False Nine. How you doing, bro? Good, bro. I'm good. Good to know. You look kind of tired. I am. Don't be tired. It was, it was because... But yeah, I look tired, bro. I think it's because uh, we had those... Um, so I'm already off work on Mondays and Tuesdays, and this week I had Wednesday off as well, so it was three days off straight, yeah. and it kind of put me in a funk to where- Oh, when you went to work? When I went back to work, I was like, dang, like I do not want to be here, and it's just been- I remember I had a job like that where I would only work, I think Friday, Saturday, no, Thursday, <clears throat> Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. I would work four, day, four days, and then I had like three days off, and I hated going in Thursdays. Yeah, bro, it's, it. it's so hard. Like, after you have a few days, like, two days off is the perfect amount of days yeah. off in a row. Because then you're going back and you're refreshed. But after three days off, that's like my limit. And I'm like, yeah. damn, now nah, I don't want to go back to work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now nah, I'm tired. But, but uh, yeah, but I feel good. I'm, t I'm tired, but I'm, I'm good. All right, guys. Well, Chill. hopefully, we bring you out with a really good episode. Uh, we really hope you guys tune into this one. Uh, this is kind of more like fun. Well, we jump around and talk about a few things. Probably more than usual, but uh, we want to talk about, uh, you know, Waco itself. And, well, uh, just some things that I want to talk I don't want to give it away too much. We want to talk about Mr. Beast and his video. How people, He's getting some negative feedback on that. Logan Paul collaborating with the UFC. Our thoughts on that. Obviously, some NFL. Um, we talk about the playoffs, Tom Brady retiring, and, and some other uh, interesting stuff on that. But let's get started, bro. I wanted to talk about this because I saw this post of somebody not gonna say no names but they were like you know if you like honestly if you want to be somebody you got to get out of waco you know to make it yeah because if you uh, hang around with small minded people you're gonna think small which which is a hundred percent yeah that's you that's know real. correct yeah but i i got really like uh i felt some type of way about it bro i was just like like bro and i and i say this uh that i felt some type of way about it because like I knew I knew this person, and they talked a lot, like a lot, big game. Like they wanted to do this, they wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, they 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 had big talk, and they were doing pretty good on 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 social media, TikTok specifically. And I was like, okay, like this dude is like really doing something, and yeah, and, and he had like I think a million already uh, got to a million followers, if I'm not mistaken. It was over that, I think. So I'm like, bro, this guy's, you know, he's doing something good, and um, if he just keeps it up, like he's gonna be. <laughs> A, a pretty big creator mm -hmm. uh i'm not sure really what happened after that but i think his he lost his tiktok account but any, banned, yeah but anyways <laughs> besides that anyway i, I like kind of uh, he inspired me in that way like in the created creative way where i was like man like you got it's me like, possible. Follower. like yeah like yeah he's right here next to me up to, we talk on a daily basis like i want to like have some of the success that you have and and I kind of wanted to talk to him to learn what he's doing, how is he doing it, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And he would kind of give me, uh, you know, some advice and it, you know, I'd like take it and, and try and do something with it. Right. But then like, I don't know, I don't know like how long it's been since his thing, his account got banned. But anyways, seen that post and I was like, man, like you, like at one point I looked up to you, bro, to like in a creative way and and for you to say that you know because i'm like man we need to make it out of waco like we have to make it out of waco like we have yeah. to we have to we have to we have to i'm just like it's just an idea of mine and, and something that uh one of my goals you know mm -hmm. with the podcast and uh i was just like kind of like uh i guess you can say like disappointed you know because yeah. i really also believe like about the whole small minded people thing no yeah for i was sure. like you you have like full control of like who you spend your time with mm -hmm. and, and who you want to be around with and, 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 and all that. Yeah. So that was just like, man, like that's not a, a good way to, to think about it or, or to like maybe give that advice, I guess. Yeah. 
I mean, I don't really understand that because um, maybe not Waco. In, well, actually, yeah, Waco. I'm just not talking specifics right now, but everybody wants to get out of their hometown. Yeah. So for me, Waco is not my hometown. Mm-hmm. So that's why maybe it's different for me being in Waco because I'm not yeah. from Waco. So I got out of my hometown and now I'm mm-hmm. in Waco and I'm like, dude, Waco is booming. Yeah. There is so much opportunity in Waco. Like mm-hmm. everybody, like California people are moving to Waco, the real estate market, well, really everywhere in Texas, but mm-hmm. Waco is like houses going up, businesses yeah. going up, like everything is going so well. So if there was ever a time to be in Waco, I feel like it is now. Like for opportunity purposes. Yeah. Um and I usually like think that people not just in Waco but wherever they live at, like if they grew up there and they like, you know, they're in like their teens, mm-hmm. they all just want to get out of that. Yeah, everybody wants to get out of their hometown. In their town. Like and and like it's not like um it's not like you know, one thing I was talking to we were talking about with my girl was like even if like you went to a big town like Austin, like they're still like small minded think like people that think small are yeah. still there they're yeah. everywhere and the thing is that i find super like not funny but like amusing in a way it's just like bro do you understand like 90 percent of people don't think like big like mm-hmm. that that or you know or they don't want to not that they they don't but not it's, it's just you know what they're they're happy with the life they have so they don't want to you know go through all these troubles to for whatever, right? I stress themselves out. Yeah, yeah, so, and that's understandable, but it's just like, bro, 90% of the people already don't want to do anything like, no, like, if you run into 10 people and you ask them, do you have a podcast and do you want to create a podcast? Nine out of 10, they're going to tell you no. Yeah. Like, it's, just, it's not for you, right? So, and what I'm trying to get at is just like, wherever you go, you're going to find these people and it's going to be like eight out of 10 that, you know, think small. If you go to like somewhere like Austin, maybe eight out of those 10 people, They'll say no too if you get lucky. They'll be like, "Yeah, I'm a creator. Yeah, I create on TikTok." Blah blah, blah. right? Well, and I just I also want to point out, <clears throat> like, places like when when people say like get out of get out of their hometown, mm-hmm. like get out of Waco, get out of you know North Carolina or like the town I'm from in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. I don't look at it as, "Hey, you're moving the next town over." Yeah, you're moving an hour and a half away. Like, there's no more opportunity in Austin. And this is my personal opinion than there is in Waco. There's not. I think there's more opportunity in Waco than there is in Austin because Austin is already a very established place. Yeah. Austin is, I mean, Waco, and I'm just using Austin as an example. I'm talking Fort Worth, San yeah, Antonio, yeah. Dallas, but Waco is an up and coming place. So if you yeah. wanted to build a brand, build yeah. a business, specifically build anything, a business, a business, yeah. Waco is it's where like, you want to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, That's because sure. Waco. We got the uh, Ma- uh, Magnolia. Magnolia. We and got Baylor. like we yeah like mm-hmm. we are. Waco is a very hot spot. Like when I worked at Cheddar's in the service industry, I had so many people come in and say, "We're here for Magnolia." Yeah, the fixed upper show. We wanted to see where like Waco is a tourist hot spot. Yeah, Baylor's national chat. Like Waco over Austin, over Dallas, over San Antonio, over any of these places. In Texas, I think Waco and the surrounding areas, like Central Texas area, mm-hmm. is the place to be in Texas if you want to build your brand, build your business, build blah, blah, blah. So people say they want to get out of their hometown. I understand that because you feel trapped. You always yeah. see like the same familiar people, faces. Similar. Everybody I get knows that. you. I get that. But that doesn't mean you can't excel. It's just you can get away from those people without yeah. getting away from. But if you're saying, I want to get out of my hometown to do something bigger and better, it's not moving two hours away. It's moving to a whole different state. Like yeah. L.A. Yeah, yeah. is getting out of your hometown or, you know, something completely different. Because Waco in Texas right now, I feel like Waco is the place to be if you want to build something. Yeah. And then, like, it's just if you think like that, I was like, OK, let's say like you are. Let's say Waco's just negative, right? Negative, negative, negative. It's like small like minded people, right? Just mm-hmm. always hating on you, shitting on you, whatever. And it's like if you go somewhere like like Austin and or a big city like L.A., let's say for LA instance where there's a lot of opportunity and you can run into somebody famous, like there's a pretty good chance that will happen yeah. if you're like in the hot spot. And I was like, and you make these connections with certain people and let's say your, your, your podcast does blow up and whatever. The reason why you left Waco was, you know, you didn't want to, the reality is, it's not like this small, like it, like <clears throat> I, this is my idea. I was like, there's not, it's not that I'm like that they're small minded, like people here as like, I'm afraid it's not of the, established people. No, as, I'm afraid of the judgment. 
Oh, you know, yeah, like that's sure, that's yeah. my argument. It's just like it's not that people say if you go to Austin, you don't know nobody, so you feel free. There's yeah, like yeah, judgment, it's like a free, new start, like, right? Yeah. But here in Waco, you know your friends, your family, they're gonna judge you every second, every moment they see your content or, mm-hmm. or yourself. Like, hey, how's that podcast going? All the time that happens to me, and like, and that's a fear that it it kind of you know I'm shy about it, but whatever. But I think that's the fear that people have. Like, okay, right? So I go to LA. Nobody fucking knows me. They see me posting my shit. Usually, if you go to LA and you go post content, you're, you're so welcome, right? You're you're welcome because yeah, there's a lot yeah. of content creators right there, right? So whatever, it goes good for you. Boom, awesome. You're on top of the fucking world. You're recording your shit. But guess what? Now you got five hundred thousand followers on on all these platforms, or like a million put together, mm-hmm. and now you have a million people judging you. And now you're dealing with negative comments. Now you're dealing with hate. Uh, now you d- you know people reacting to you and calling you stupid you know just all this negative shit so the reality is like the negativity doesn't ever go away the judgment's never going to go away like the reason why you left like that shit's going to go around and it's going to come back in a fucking circle you know yeah. what i'm saying like that's how i see it so it's just like the you're not really like yeah you kind of are avoiding judgment or yeah the negativity that people give you and you go and you might excel at the beginning but I'm like, bro, wouldn't it be so much nicer that you fucking excelled in the place where everybody says you can't excel? You can't excel. Yeah, you know what I'm saying exactly. Yeah. And I'm just like, I, like, I want to be like, like when people say like, you're him, like, that's what I want the podcast to be in Waco, you know? Yeah. And, um, and my, my, my dream, bro, with the, with the podcast is like, when people think about Waco, I want them to think about the False Nine podcast. <clears throat> yeah. You know, people, it, Austin, oh, Joe Rogan's there, right? Oh, Elon, yeah. Elon's there. Is that really where he's at? Joe Rogan, mm-hmm. you didn't know that? No. Yeah, he's there. He's in oh. Austin. Oh. And so is Elon. You know, and and who and there's a pretty there's a few more celebrities I that I don't Elon, know. Yeah. Lex Friedman's there. I don't know if you know who he is. Um, he's another big podcaster, but they're in Austin. Mark Cuban in Dallas, right? So like, who's in Waco? Chip and Joanne's in Waco. That's it. Uh, the what's her name? The coach for uh basketball, the girls' coach. She was like kind of like a local yeah. celebrity, but she went to LSU. Um, so it's just like there's a few competitors you know it's yeah. it's not like i go to austin i gotta go compete with joe rogan Brittany Griner, and then there's a fucking list you know gonna go to dallas i gotta go compete with fucking luka Doncic, uh, mark cuban mark cuban you know what i'm saying like that's yeah. that's the market you're jumping into mm-hmm. now don't get me wrong I'm, I'm i might meet mark cuban and he might ask me about my podcast and he might get me connected with someone like the dallas Mavs team and that can lead to who knows what, yeah. but like you know that that's an opportunity that may or might not come by living over there yeah. on top of the already competing with that in that market. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when people you know and this like back to the post, like there was a lot of likes, there was a lot of shares, all this stuff, and I'm like, man, like I was just like, man, I don't want people to think this way. I don't want them to think that they need to leave their hometown to 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 go be somebody. <clears> you know, no, it's it's definitely an unhealthy way of thinking, and mm-hmm. it's basically like. When I mean, because I'm I was a firm believer, and I had to, I had to get out of my hometown, but I didn't think that everybody needed to get out of my hometown. I just had to get out because yeah. And I there's some people that do. Yeah, I, I, people go down bad paths, and yeah. they need a reset, so they go somewhere else, which is exactly what happened to me. But I think if you're doing something in another town, and you tell everybody that is in your hometown, like, hey, the best thing you could do for yourself is get out because there's nothing there for you. Yeah, you're basically telling everybody in your hometown, hey, I'm better than you. Yeah, and because I got out, I'm better than you, mm-hmm. and you're not doing nothing with your life because you're still there. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. Yeah, but uh, now of course the person that posted whatever is a friend of mine. Blah blah blah. He does have some. I question a lot of his uh, the way he goes about things and what he says on social media. On social media specifically, yeah, because yeah. uh, people have different personas on social yeah. media, like completely different than how you mm-hmm. are, how they are in person, which is fine. It's whatever. Um, but yeah, I just feel, I don't like how people do that. Like say you're not going anywhere if you still live in this place, yeah. like, you got to get out of there. Or you're not going to be shit. Uh huh. I so, mean, and like the podcast it started in, in Illinois, we were right, right next to Chicago. Uh-huh. I never took advantage of, uh, I mean, this is also like peak COVID. So I never yeah. took advantage of meeting people or getting to like network, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I could have met a lot of people and, and got to know people. Chicago, yeah, probably. You know, so and I could have got some people uh, on the show and whatever, but I don't. I didn't know any of the knowledge that I know now mm-hmm. that than I did before. Now, if I was in Chicago now, like I'll be probably at a bar, honestly, like every other night, just trying to get to know people. Yeah, making connections. Yeah, but that's um, really what it's all about. So just making um, connections. But I'm like, bro, we're in Waco. We're literally 
in my fucking room. Like, I slept here for years. Mm-hmm. Now, luckily, uh, I mean, in the other room, that's where I actually sleep. And gratefully, my pa- I'm in my parents' house on top of that. Like, they let me, you know, use the room to, to work and record in the other room to to uh, to sleep. Yeah. And, I mean, we got our lights here. We got our camera here. We got the seats here. You know, we got the microphones. And I mean, this is the setup, and that's just how it is. And we're posting, you know, every day. Content is out every day. We post every Monday a new episode. And it's just like. If you want to make it happen, you you'll make it happen. It I does, mean, we, doesn't matter where you're we at. recorded outside, you know. And I don't know what you think about when I like, oh, we're gonna record outside or we're we gonna record our room or when we recorded at your house. I mean, the the podcast has changed so many different places. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. So record. and it doesn't matter to me either. I just want as long as it looks nice on camera, we can make adjustments when I edit it, and then it goes out. Yeah, but it's just like, bro, I'm we're we're in Waco, you know, and and I want people to see it in Waco. Like that's. I, I want the audience to meet Waco and that's why I wish we had a bigger space to uh to get guests and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But like I want to share like Waco's story, bro. Like honestly. Like and I honestly also don't see myself living here probably like in the next five years. Like I just maybe it will happen if something crazy. Yeah. But like I also do want to live like in a city like Chicago or like Austin. For you, sure. Who knows, right? Yeah. Who knows what the future has for me and the and the show, but um I I'm not, I'm not someone who's like I want to stay in Waco and have a house. I want to like my cool my kids to probably go to school here eventually mm-hmm. when that time comes. But if it's just like me and 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 my other half, like I want to, you know, I want to like see the world and whatever. Besides the fucking point, uh, I still want to make it in Waco. And like I said, I want to share everybody's story from Waco. Like when we can have guests again and fit them in on camera. Like I want to like share these business owners. Or like students, or just you know your ordinary, you know worker yeah. that has a, a pretty crazy story, and you know, and or like we had a school coach. That video did really good, bro. Like I want to share people's story in because there's good people, good stories in Waco. Like, there's a lot of good stories in Waco, know? yeah. And this is like, bro, the the people in Waco are usually good people. You know what I'm saying? Um, obviously, For the most part, yeah. You, there's you some got bad. Your people, there's some bad everywhere, but but it's not it's not necessarily Waco, bro. There's just shitty people everywhere. No, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I take phone calls, like, for my job majority of the time. I'm talking to people from, like, like California, from New York, from Florida. Like, I'm talking to everybody, you know. And there's nice people. There's mean people. And there's all types of people. And I was like, that shit's not going to fucking change, bro. No. Like, if, if you want to, like, if you're someone, and kind of getting to the end of this, I was like, if you're someone who wants to, you know, be somebody whether that's get a good education have a family uh have a certain amount of money in the bank account make a certain money every month whatever your goals may be like i think it's important to hang around with people like that like for sure like you want to go to the gym hang out with somebody who goes to the gym yeah you know if you want to be a podcaster ask a podcaster questions i mean i know a few of them in waco including Mm -hmm. us um you know like now you want to be a doctor as a doctor like you know whatever right but those people are out there yeah um so i don't want people especially you know here in a growing city like i i see waco bro as like the gold rush you know and i and i think it was like peak gold rush before uh the real estate market was like like gold rush for real yeah um but i mean i remember bro i guess well no no let me finish what i was saying but back to uh i just want people to like you know believe in themselves like it because at the end of the day bro it, it's going to come down to to the person and like for example for us on the on the podcast uh i'm i'm telling you what we need to do and what we need to improve if i'm not telling you this or if we're not showing up every day not every day if we're not showing up every week i mean i got my notes here if you look at that journal there's notes there if you look about on my monitor there's notes there i mean it's just like i'm trying to slowly improve <coughs> every episode mm-hmm. uh just little by little I'm consuming certain content that makes me a better person and makes me better on the show. Uh, but, and I think those things are like, if you want to be in a certain mindset and a certain environment, you can create that. Don't go look for a fucking environment, create your own environment. And then, you know, you'll attract people that you, you need to be around with. Yeah. That's how, that's how I see it, bro. But I was just like, no, man, it, it kind of like, just, I don't know. I, I really felt some type of way about it, bro. Yeah. When I, seen it. I was just like, man, like, 
that is not the way to look about it. And, yeah, and I can I, see where you come from. Yeah. I'm not from Waco, so I didn't really like get. Well, I got here when I was in th- 2007 is when we when we moved here. Yeah, so and that's pretty good. Yeah, pretty good while though. So you know, I and I was growing up, and I was one of those people like, oh, I want to get out of Waco. I want to get out of Waco, right? Yeah. But I mean, I've been in and out out Waco so many times. Uh, my girlfriend, she she's been out of Waco for like a long time, like she's barely been back for like two years, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not like like Waco's just a, it's a nice place, bro. It, it's not that bad. No, it's not a bad place. At you know, all. it's a good place if you want to like live a you know a decent life. It's, like it's, it's what you make of yeah. it. Yeah. Really. So and it's I'm sure it's like that in every uh you know <laughs> mid like mid population or a high population city like it's yeah. it's you know whatever you make out of it you know so you know if you're someone in waco that's listening like i just want you to know like whatever you want to do like you create that environment and you will accomplish like those goals you know we have our camera there's nobody behind it uh we mm-hmm. have our own mics there's nobody controlling sound i edit this thing like we we make it happen like and that's how it happens and whenever we make it it's just like well, we fucking made that happen for sure we didn't have to go uh, to another town or outsourced to you know outsource to, to to do what we needed to do so if you want to get it done it, it's possible and it's very very realistic now this is we're two years going we're on our third year now mm-hmm. uh, trying to make that happen that shit right there just blows my mind itself like for you it's been like a year yeah a little over you're a going year. on yeah. your second year um but you know me i'm going on my third year you know i've been doing this shit like every day it's been podcast for like oh uh, two over two years now and it's just like you know, showing up every day and, and trying to make it happen to yeah, that's crazy. achieve those dreams, you know. Bro, late, you don't want something crazy? So I go to, I started running again, so I started running at Baylor. Uh-huh. So when I get real tired, I start, like, you know, motivating myself and shit like that. Yeah. You know what I start screaming, bro, or telling myself? Uh-huh. I, I look at the stadium and I'm like, this is my city. So oh, shit. It's pretty crazy, huh? Yeah. Because, I mean, Baylor's probably, like, pretty popular no oh, yeah magnolia same thing like that's who i want to compete with bro like that's yeah. who i see competition it's just like like baylor and, and it's like some rocky vibes yeah bro i was <laughs> running i just look over the stadium I'm like this is my city like fuck like you know i'm just trying i like support baylor i'm not a like yeah but big, it's like fuck baylor like yeah i'm just like yeah. I, you know just for motivation purposes 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 uh but yeah bro i'll be running i'll just be like this is my city you know and yeah and i just this is that's the goal bro like I have so many things that I want to do with Waco and, and the false nine, you know, combine and, and together. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh, uh, but anyways, uh, let's kind of jump. Oh no, no, I was also going to tell you too. Uh, when I think when COVID was first starting out, so this is 2020. I was helping my cousin George. Uh, I'm gonna give him a quick shout out, George. George, my uh, brother-in-law. I don't know if you, you've met him. I think probably. Uh, but anyways, he started, and I'm, like I said, big shout out to him and his uh, business, Waco Water Balance. If you need a rental oh, slide, okay, okay, yeah. if you need a rental slide, if you need a water slide, if you need a dry inflatable, mechanical board, chairs, tables, tables uh, did I say tent already? I don't know if no, I said tent, but uh, inflatable obstacle course, they have it, so check them out. But anyways, he started his business. He, he's had it like for four, five years now. And it started popping in COVID. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. So, you know, he was busy. Like, bro, we 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 would wake up at six in the morning, and we'd be like, we'd be getting home like at ten at night, <clears throat> it was, and you know, the whole weekend. Then the next morning, we gotta wake up again at six morning and do the same shit all over again. Mm. You know. But anyways, we were talking one time, um, and I go, bro, wake was like, like, and all oh, this is when I first moved back, and my car broke down. We were at the junkyard, and I said, bro. Like, I kind of am not ex- as excited for Waco because I was really happy in Illinois. But I was like, Waco is also like a big place for opportunity. Yeah. I was like, brother, it's like a uh, real estate uh, market. I mean, we were selling cars at that time. Um, anything like I think business wise, bro, was like like there was opportunity and there still is now. Yeah. You know? Even more so now. Yeah. I think. The only thing that maybe kind of sucks is like selling cars and uh, houses. But besides right now, yeah. Besides that, like, bro, if you want to start a business, like, you know that, like, people haven't done. I'm like, bro, like, you can make that shit happen. Yeah, I mean, you got to think, we're, we're getting a river walk. Yeah, that's crazy. That, like, San Antonio is my favorite place to go in Texas because of the river walk. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine, like, how much bigger Waco is going to get when we have a river walk? 
hotels on the <clears> Riverwalk, <throat> all this shit on the river. Like, Waco yeah. is going, like, if there's a time to be in Waco, it's right now, before yeah. the push. And, like, another, and then, you, and, you know, people, business, like, people, like, <clears> think <throat> that mindset, like, there's going to be a river walk. You can mm-hmm. set up a little taco stand by the downtown, like, now. Yes. And establish that shit. Or you can have, like, little uh, rental, canoe rentals, bike rentals, which is already kind of there. Yeah. But when you start thinking in those ideas, like, you can do, have these type of businesses surrounded by, like, Waco, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, people already coming in for Magnolia, people coming in for basketball, like, in hotels. So, you think in that mindset, you, like, you see opportunity for business. Yeah. And it's there. So, <laughs> again... It's whatever you make out of it, you know? For sure, yeah. So, um, False Nine, Waco, like an X for collaboration. So, one day, bro. One day, there'll be board signs on on 35 of, gonna, you, of you and me. We're going to get a road named after us, False Nine. Does that happen? <laughs> Sorry, I had a burp. But, like, does it happen, like, where... Uh, or how do you get a road, like... Is Either <clears throat> I think you have to buy it. Oh, for real? Buy a road, yeah. Or it, it just gets picked. It, it gets picked, yeah. Because mm-hmm. I'm, I be thinking like, how do people come up with this stuff? Because there's a Martin Luther King Drive, like in every town. In every town, yeah. Because of his importance to the world, uh-huh. but I think you have to buy one or get it named after you for yeah. historical purposes. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I used to think like Martin Luther King used to run like just straight through. I was like, bro, does this road just not stop? <laughs> This road go all the way through every city and every fucking yeah, state. Yeah, bro. bro. I, really, I was like, bro, I could have sworn because I was in Illinois. Uh-huh. I was like, there was an MLK and it was kind of like over a river, like kind of the same idea. I was like, bro, does it just go like yeah, all the way through? it just goes all the way through. I'm like, man, that's crazy. But then yeah. I figured out, like, you know, there's just it, multiple. Yeah, yeah bro. Yeah, it's, yeah, so it's okay. That's me being a little slow. A little slow. But um, we'll start talking about a little bit of Mr. Beast and his video. Did you watch the whole video? Uh, I watched... So I watched a little bit of when he sent it to me. I watched a little bit more, but I did, I never finished it. But I I imagine the end is the same as the beginning. Yeah, like it's just him. Like all right. So you said that you you didn't finish watching the video. <clears throat> yeah. So I watched like the first three minutes, and then uh, I had another second available at work, so I watched the second like two minutes. Yeah. But it just seemed to be the same. But I mean, he he made a video that uh, he helped a lot of people cure their blindness. Yeah. Um. I'm not sure if some of those people were 100 percent blind, and then they got to see. A lot like, of them weren't. Yeah, it, that's what I was assuming. I was like, not because I don't think you can first like permanent, like like permanently like, cure, like or cure permanent blindness, like like when you're like really like you like like when you're born blind. Yeah, I don't you think there's a way to cure it. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It was people who over time started to lose their sight. Yeah, and eventually, and usually people on the video were elderly or they had like an, an accident or something like that, yeah. or they just you know. Yeah, uh, it was it just happened. But anyways, um, he did that at the end of the video. I just kind of tell you what happened. Um, it just showed like a little montage of how many people he helped around the world. Uh-huh. So he a like, thousand? yeah, I don't know. It was a big number, but he helped people in like uh, South Africa, um, so Indonesia, um, just around the world. And I thought that was fucking dope. You yeah. Know? And he paid for all their surgeries. He paid for all their surgeries yeah. and X, Y, and Z. Um, and I'm not really sure what was the hate on the video mm-hmm. um or why he was receiving some type of hate or i seen the people that like he's like chasing clout or he's clout chasing uh, that was my fucking reaction and i'm just like it's mr beast i was like bro it's mr beast that's the same i was like mr beast is like one of the most wholesome people like wholesome celebrity in the world yeah, and probably the biggest name on youtube, YouTube tiktok tiktok twitter yeah like Twitch, any like anything, he's yeah. the biggest name there. Why, why is he clout? How is he clout chasing? I was like, man, y'all gotta like leave him alone, like for real. Yeah, I was like, he, bro, he started YouTube like about ten years ago or mm-hmm. a little bit more, and I was like, bro, this guy literally grinded his ass off for so many years. Yeah, and he like would put, he would give away so much money in the beginning, and and he just, puts all his money back into yeah, like, like he yeah. And you can tell he's one of those people who probably don't need much. Like he, I'm sure he has a nice house, a nice car. No, he lives in his studio. I believe that. Oh yeah, he yeah. he he lives in his studio. So I mean, yeah. there you go. Like I'm, but I'm sure like he has like maybe like a Tesla, yeah. you know, or just like you know maybe he has a nice car, like a fifty, eighty thousand dollar car yeah. around that range. I don't think he's fucking driving like a, a Ben, like a fucking expensive Mercedes or anything like that. No. Nah. Um, but you can tell he's like a wholesome guy. So yeah. 
I'm just like, bro, like, North why, Carolina. I was like, why are you going after somebody like this? Or like, why are you even, why is he even trending on Twitter for his fucking video? It's like, he helped a lot of fucking people, yeah. you know? And like. If them people are mad, why are, why, yeah. why are you mad? And I was like, bro, like literally they're on camera. Each person was on camera, like no more than a minute. Yeah. So it's just like majority of the interaction was probably off camera with the people. Uh-huh. And I was like, Mr. Beast, like. Like, I don't know, man. Like, he he's such a good guy, and I think he's... I hope one day we can both meet him and get have a conversation with him, and hopefully one day he can be on the show. Yeah. But... um, That'd be dope. You know, he's one of the only reasons I wish I still live in North Carolina. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, yeah, he, he... Yeah, I would, like, love to meet him. And yeah. um, he always gives great advice when he's... Damn. It's your dog, bro. I know. I gotta go pink <laughs> little weenie. They're dogs. Trust me. Um, So... Uh yeah he like I said back to the thing he's just getting hate and I just wanted to bring it up because I'm like bro people just be tripping like for for nothing I was like he he just made a he doesn't even he makes like a video every two three weeks mm-hmm. you know and his videos take a long I'm like bro I was like imagine how long oh. that video took to make like, it took months yeah to make. yeah I mean, he constantly working bro yeah so Even, they, also did you see the video where he said he got hate about um like giving away like jets giving away like houses. Some like people that. people commented that he was fucking up these people's lives. I don't know he how. he was giving in these houses and stuff. Because they have to pay taxes on it. Yeah. And he was like, bro, literally, if I give them a house, nine times out of ten, they sell it. Yeah. And if they don't want the house, I'll just buy it back from them. Yeah. So and he Mr. buys Beast, the house, gives it away, and then buys it back from them. And Mr. Beast like, publicly says shit like this. Like, I think he one of the videos, someone said, like, oh, if I win this island, what are you going to do with it? Like, eight, of them said, eight out of ten of them said they're going to sell it. Yeah, that's what I would do if he gave me a house or an island or something. And I was like, you kind of got to understand that the concept of the video is for content. Yeah. Like, oh, we're giving away this island. But the the reality is they might just be like a fucking money exchange and a signature. Yeah. It's just going to be like, hey, you know, this for content. You're probably never even going to fucking be on this uh, island again. Mm -hmm. I need you to sign here. Here's your fucking money. Let's get rolling. Yeah. Thanks for being on the video. Yeah. And I'm sure, like, literally, that's what happens majority of the time. When he gives yeah, away houses, cars, all that shit. Yeah, because a lot of the people have a car. They have a yeah. house. They just want the money value, which is yeah. same way I would be. Yeah. But. And I was like, bro, if you get Lamborghini, insurance expensive, uh, parts are expensive, yeah. sell it, bro. Sell it. That's what I would do. Exactly. I got it. If yeah. I got a house, I'd probably keep the house, to be honest. I'd keep the house and rent it out, for sure. Yeah. Or, or live in it if I yeah. need to, yeah. So I'm just like, if I got a house that maybe taxes are too much and whatever. <clears throat> but taxes like but a, few, like, bro, a few grand a year. I was like, bro, that's your paying still like cheaper than a mortgage. Yeah. So like, it's just like, whatever. You can't even hate on that shit. No. So even if you try and make a worst case scenario, meanest case scenario, Mr. Beast, you, you, you really can't find a, a reason why to to hate on him. He makes uh, Feastables, his, his candy. Mm-hmm. He mean he's trying to make healthy candy because he thinks that the candy that's out there is not good for you. Yeah, and I was like, and I was like, dude, this guy really believes that. Like, yeah, and he's trying to cure he, cancer, he, world hunger, like all this shit. He started that whole tree thing. That shit's still going. That on. was dope. Yeah, that, that shit's shit still dope. going. Yeah, on. that was dope. And I'm like, bro, the dude did. He just likes to fucking help people. Yeah, you know, and that's just the person he is. So I'm like, bro, that there shouldn't be no hate. I was like, bro, Mr. if you're Beast. someone who's like hitting on Mr. Beast or like being one of those people's like nah man nah and i seen also too he uh some uh big influencer he was just like on twitch he was just like man it frustrates me that you know 10 minutes can can change someone's life uh from like blindness like because that's how much the surgery like took it's that's what they were surgery. saying yeah they're like bro and he, the guy was like man it frustrates me so much how like easily this is to fix you know and um and that was a good point yeah i was like man like yeah if every doctor just donated a free thing like per day or per week mm-hmm. i mean you fix a lot of fucking people's eyes so yeah. but unfortunately that's the world we fucking live in but then you got people like mr beast who's who's trying to like you know spread and give back, yeah, and give back. the money yeah uh, did you see the video he collabed with uh this guy named keith, keith lee? lee yeah you like you watch his love stuff keith lee. me keith too lee, bro, bro. i love so shout out keith lee bro in vegas you need to come through man that would be dope. That would be dope. He's, that would be dope. Uh, he's a, uh, I like, I just, uh, yeah, I love his videos. But anyways, he, he made a, he made a TikTok. A collab with Mr. Beast. No, no, but well, like trying to get him on. I think he, uh, Mr. Beast commented on his video. Mm-hmm. That's how it started. And he replied, oh, Keith Lee's a smart motherfucker. He replied with, all right, Mr. Beast. Like, um, I forgot what Mr. Beast said. He said something 
And, and then Keith was like, why don't you do it with me? Like, why don't you try this food with me? Yeah. And then I guess Mr. They got in touch and he was like, bet I'm down. And then I don't know whose idea it was, but Keith Lee said that uh, the story is that there's this restaurant that got broken into and they were open that same day that I got broken into. Yep. And then that he told Mr. Beast, I was like, hey, let's review their food and like, let's help them kind of get back on the road um, or like get back on to, to business, you mm-hmm. know? And that's what they did. And I was like, bro, that's that's badass. Like yeah. seeing shit like that is badass. And they did the review. Of course, it was a yeah. great review. And then Mr. Beast gave him ten thousand dollars. Yeah, like on top of that. On top of that, I'm like, bro, I'm like, how can you hate this? I'm guy? like, bro, they gonna be orders out the ass tomorrow morning. Oh, you know sure. what I'm saying? Like people gonna be waiting out the door. Mm-hmm. And it was so funny seeing Mr. Beast's reaction when he was eating the food because like you can tell like he doesn't eat probably like. Well, he said he's uh, never had a taco other than Taco Bell. Yeah, I was like, bro, you're crazy. Yeah, like, what so, the f- bro. That's what I said. And then uh, when he ate it, you just see his white ass just eating the taco. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, bro, this is so funny to see Mr. Beasley the fucking taco. Yeah. So, I imagine him eating like cheeseburgers. Yeah, cheeseburgers. Or like a piece of pizza. Or pizza. Yeah, very American. Like food. noodles. Yeah. Yeah. So. Ramen noodles. But, um, I thought that shit was funny. So, but I was like, bro, shit like that, like that's fucking badass. You that know, was, just, I like that video, bro. Yeah, and good Keith cracks me up, bro, with this Paw Patrol chair. Oh, I don't even notice it. I just noticed the food, bro. That food just be looking good as fuck. Yeah, one time. of uh, I think one of the like a reasons a lot of people like him is because his thing is he sits in a Paw Patrol chair. Oh, really? I didn't even ev- notice for every review. Yeah, at the end of the review, he gets up and you see his Paw Patrol chair, not like a a big one, like mm. a little kid's Paw Patrol chair. Wow. That's what he does all his reviews in. That's funny. So him and Mr. Beast did reviews at a Paw Patrol table yeah. in Paw Patrol chairs. And it's the cutest fucking thing, bro. That's badass. And his That's voice cool. and his energy matches yeah, like the kid vibes. Like you get kid vibes from it, so it's cute. Yeah, I don't know what like, I don't know what it was that like made him, because he has like that it factor to me. That yeah. just made him go viral and like he just has it in him. It's his demeanor, I think. Yeah. I think it's just like his his tone. Because yeah, my girl's like, you dem- sound so monotone. And I was like, yeah, but like it's catchy at the same time. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So, but yeah, I like watching Keith Lee and I, it was so cool to see him like blow the fuck up. Yeah. I don't even care about most of the food he does. Like, no, I care about cool. the food, bro. Yeah. I care about his voice and his demeanor, bro. Cause yeah. like he just cracks me up. Like I just laugh. Yeah. I smile every time I watch him. Nah, bro. That food be like, I'm like, bro, let me see that. You know? Yeah. Now some of it, like, I'm like, damn, bro. Like, if I lived in Vegas, I'd be trying these places every single day. Yeah, bro. They have <coughs> crazy food over there. Mm-hmm. So, that's Mr. Beast. Get off Mr. Beast's dick. Mr. Yeah. Beast, hop on the show. For sure. Anytime you come through Waco, Texas, you know, you just know you're welcome here in my room. Well, that's kind of sus, but you're welcome. You're yeah. wel- we welcome you. <laughs> I'm sure we, Baylor and, and Magnolia welcomes you, too, but we really welcome you. More than them. More than them. I've watched more of your videos. Anyways, let's kind of switch off to another creator who I really personally, eh, I'm not a big fan of, uh, Logan Paul. He, Again. Congratulations to him and, and, and KSI, KSI and yeah. Prime for making the collaboration with UFC, which is fucking big, bro. It's a any, lifetime, isn't it? I don't know. Or, but I was like, bro, any collaboration with the UFC, which is great. You're winning. Yeah, because UFC is yeah. only getting bigger. Now, um, do I like... Agree with uh, the UFC 100%? No. Do I agree with Logan Paul 100%? No. But the collaboration itself. Smart move. It's, yeah, it's it's a great business move for both of them. Um, you get to pull some audience from KSI and Logan. I think the audience from KSI weighs more for Prime because a lot of people already know Logan American, mm-hmm. you know, and UFC is also international. Yeah, I think it was more of a win for UFC. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, I really feel like KSI is pulling a lot of the – he, I think he's just known. Well, I don't know. They're both known pretty big internationally. Yeah. But anyways. Uh, Especially because of prom. Yeah. I think. I mean, they have also, they have a collaboration with now the UFC and Arsenal. Do you know Arsenal is <coughs> like a, a football club, right? Mm-hmm. In the Premier League. They're number yeah. one right now. They're probably going to win the league. Sorry, Johnny, to hear that. And all to you, all those soccer, football fans, especially Premier League fans. Um, they, they team up with Arsenal. They have Prime in the stadium. You see it on the fucking grass. You see it around the stadium. They have signs and shit like that, which is so badass, bro. So badass. Like yeah. like I said, good for them. But I, that shit's just weird to me, bro. Yeah. It's just weird. And the reason why I say it's weird, because Jake Paul and Dana White don't fuck with each other. Do not at all. At all. Yeah. And like they was like really going after each other for a long, for a good while there. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, like, how do you... Like, I understand it's business, mm-hmm. but I'm like, bro, this is your brother. 
like he's your brother bro yeah and and what's crazy is that jay paul announced like literally a week or two ago that he he signed like a, a mma mma contract a certain amount of fights yeah and that like certain amount of the money is going to go to the fighters and stuff like that like, he made that collab and that agreement which is badass he's trying to do something good i'm not saying dana white's not doing it because i don't know what's going on over there yeah but um i'm like bro you make this collab with with your brother I mean, with uh, the UFC, with with Logan Paul, and obviously Dana White, he's a business guy. So, like, honestly, it's really a it's a win. Like you said, it's a win for the UFC. Yeah, you know, and um, and and then you got like uh, I don't know, bro. I just think it's fucking weird. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm sure I'm not the only one who thinks this. No, I think it's like if I put myself in Jake's shoes. Yeah, I would be poor Logan bro. shoes. Either one of those shoes. I'm like, bro, like your brother. As if I'm talking about logan paul your brother is like the mo the main spokesperson against the ufc yeah and he just signed a contract with the competitor of ufc mm -hmm. why would you not collab with them and help build your brother mm -hmm. and build your brand and build yeah. this brand that your brother is trying to promote like why would you not do that instead you go against him maybe for the money but it, or it's obviously for the money yeah no but, question but, but i don't understand like where where is that line drawn where the money matters more than you know, family or supporting your family yeah, and their endeavors where, or whatever. Like just not to want to burn any bridges with, yeah. with your bro, you know? And I'm like, man, I don't have any brothers, but there's uh like one or two <clears> people <throat> that I can call brothers. Yeah. Um and I was like, I don't ever want to burn a bridge with them. And it's just like when even if it ever came down to business or like even like we were talking earlier about like I was like, bro, if the day comes, if something comes, like I was like, I want to give you as much as I can and as much as like you deserve. Uh -huh. When that time comes, like I want to like I want you to win. I want to win myself and the people that I love. I want to see them be to be good for sure. You know, like I'm not, and I really feel like Logan's one of those type of people. Like you know, he might live in, and I'm sure he's taking care of his family and all that stuff. But I'm like, bro, you just I feel like you just care about the money, like in in. And like the life that that you want, yeah. and how you want to live it. But I don't know if it's. I feel like maybe if Jake wasn't already, because Jake is probably borderline richer than Logan from just from boxing. Yeah, uh, he's he's probably got more money than Logan. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Yeah, he's already like, oh, my brother's already good, so I'm gonna do this mm -hmm. for me. But I still think like. I just wonder if that was ever also a discussion with Jake. Like if he ever talked to him about it. It had to have been, bro. I I, I don't know. I don't, I'm sure. It, I mean, I would think like. Maybe Logan let him like gave him a heads up, but I don't think Logan ever was like, "Hey, bro, uh, is it cool with you?" Yeah, you know, I think it was just like, "Hey, bro, this is hey, this happen. is what I'm doing." Yeah, like, yeah. And what but I feel like what also they got a weird relationship, bro. I don't they, they, they got do. a weird relationship because like, even KSI and Jake are enemies. But that's another thing too that I don't. I was like, bro, literally the most hated that hate Jake Paul the most. You're working with them, and he's your best friend, or yeah. other than like mike yeah on the podcast but ksi is he always says best friend business partner yeah i'm like bro how mm -hmm. how does that and maybe they are just business partners like maybe they don't really fuck with each other like that maybe they're just like hey what's up bro like cool yeah. and they just doing it for the the prime yeah yeah yeah. which again good business move on but they though. also have like a reality show like that dating show that they do but that was just a collab too yeah but they seem like yeah, like they were fucking with Log each other. Logan has said on many a times that's yeah. that's his really good friend. Like he yeah. watches his boxing fights, he cheers for him. And I don't know, bro. This, this, this just lo little love triangle is just super weird to me. Yeah, and I was like, bro, you literally <laughs> have a business, like a business with the, some guy that wants to beat up your brother, mm -hmm. doesn't like him. You just collabed with another person that really doesn't like your brother. I'm like, that's just weird to me, bro. Yeah. And that it has to like, I don't know. Like, I don't want to drag this on too long, but I was like, it has to say something about the type of person you your are. Your morale, your yeah, character. Like, yeah, for sure. You know, so. Which I don't like Logan Paul. I like Jake Paul. I don't yeah. like Logan Paul. And that's, yeah, that's kind of what happened. I feel like people are leaning more to like Jake Paul. Than, yeah. You know, I don't they're like. Move, they're yeah. moving towards yeah. Jake Paul over Logan instead of like how it used to be a couple years ago, Logan yeah. over Jake. Now it's Jake over Logan. But you can so. kind of see also Jake like really wants to do good in his world and his, uh, his circle, I guess, or. The community that he's in with like boxing, he wants to take care of and people. like boxing, uh, yeah. boxing pay UFC pay. I mean, we we can talk about this a little bit. Like Nungano just fucking left because he he didn't get the money he wanted. I don't know yeah. what happened. Yeah, he, yeah. I mean, he was gonna be the highest paid UFC fighter of all time, and it still wasn't. But enough. it still wasn't enough. And John Jones even said, like, "Hey, this is the same reason I was on a holdout or whatever." Like, I understand. Yeah. yeah. John Jones was gonna be the highest paid fighter or yeah. 
I think he was, but he was like, it's sometimes the money they pay you to do the things that they're asking you to do just isn't enough. Mm -hmm. So, and, um, and I'm like, that just goes to show like, you know, he, he was the, he, the, the champion, the champion of the, the world. He was the face of the UFC, heavyweight champion of the world. And I'm like, bro, he just walked away from that shit, knowing that John Jones was coming back. Yeah. But you know, what's sad is all the money they were offering him mm -hmm. as a heavyweight in the UFC he can go fight Tyson Fury one time and probably make the same quadruple amount. what they were offering him. Yeah. Or, That's probably like a $10, $20 million payday if he yeah, fights Tyson Fury. Because I've seen the comparison, like the money he's made in his career with the UFC mm -hmm. versus how many fights he would have to do in the boxing to get that same amount. And yeah. It was literally like one or two fights. Yeah. Like boxers just, or something like, I don't know how or why, because personally I like UFC better, Yeah, but boxers just get, I think it's more like the older generation yeah. and the younger generation. It's like a, it's like Formula One, bro. It's like a money sport. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But boxing, bro, they like millions of dollars per yeah. fight. Like Tyson and Canelo, mm -hmm. twenty, thirty million a fight. I'm sure. Yeah. Mayweather was making shit ton of money. Oh, he's making fight. six uh, or how many hundred million? How much? Hundred million? Yeah, three, six, nine figures, eight figure, nine figures a fight. But right. I mean, when he fought Connor, like Connor still got a big ass bag. Yeah, but compared to what Mayweather got, I was yeah, like, yo, he made like two hundred mil on that fight. I think. Mm. And Mayweather, so I might be I wrong. Mean, Connor, yeah. Let me let me yeah, yeah, say yeah. that real quick. But I'm pretty sure Mayweather made like 200 million on that fight. Yeah, but it's like, bro, like, yeah, boxing makes that fight, and and I get it. Maybe the UFC doesn't make that type of money. I think they make close to it. They make pretty. I'm sure they make a lot of money. It's just the Dana mm -hmm. probably has to pay a lot more money to the promoters and to himself. And there's probably a lot more people involved where boxing is tried and true. Yeah, like. If you have big names, it's going to sell. I feel like Dana has to pay out a lot more people than boxing. Well, does. yeah, because in the boxing, you got that promotion. And it's, mm -hmm. it's literally like maybe two promotions. The UFC is one big organization. Yeah. And you got to pay like, you know, it's one person. You know, it's just this organization is paying all these people in the organization versus boxing. It's that you have like someone like Showtime involved, Mayweather Promotions, Canela Promotions. Mm -hmm. Canela's paying their people. Uh, Mayweather's paying their people. Showtime's paying their people. So you don't got to pay all those extra you know, cost. Yeah. But also they're still bringing in all that extra money. <clears throat> so, but I also think like, I mean, they, their sponsors on, uh, on the UFC, you know, they got monster on the UFC thing. There's a few more sponsors. They have crypto. Uh, they have the T-Mobile arena. Well, I'm not sure if the T-Mobile arena is a sponsor, but I know the crypto F crypto's a uh, crypto.com. They're a big sponsor for the UFC. I think they're the biggest sponsor if I'm not mistaken for the UFC. Uh, Venom sponsors them by the shorts and shirts like the the gear. Yeah, it used to be Reebok. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean that's all money that they're making, and they probably got to pay their people and stuff like that. But I really believe like the profit margins are so high for the UFC, bro. Oh, like yeah. bro, the people on top like they're making a lot of money. I just I, I don't know why I have that feeling, and I feel like they are, and I feel like it's just like uh, it's like a. It's like something, bro, that's just going to blow up on their face, I think. Because I think at one point, the fighters are going to fucking be like, yo, we need more money, bro. Oh, yeah. I you mean, know? but and now it's gotten to the point where everybody's trying to be McGregor. Yeah. And it's kind of getting old, too, because no one's doing that shit. Yeah, because McGregor was the original. Yeah. Like, he talked to shit, and for a period of time, he backed it up. Yeah. But, but And he was reckless, and people loved it. But now you got all these Im imitators like Patty mm -hmm. Pimblett. I love Patty Pimblett. I know. But you can tell... He is trying so hard, Too hard to be Conor McGregor. And I'm like, bro, stop. Yeah. Like, just stop. You're not you're not that great of a fighter. You're a good fighter. You're not yeah. that great. Conor was great until he got a little too rich, and I think it got to his head, and he cared more about the money than he did the training and the fighting. But, but you want, like, I guess, well, I'm sorry. I'll let you finish. No, I'm just saying, like, every now it's like everybody's trying too hard to be McGregor, so not people aren't feeding into it like yeah. they did McGregor because they were like, oh my God, it's we've never new. seen this before. Yeah, yeah. Like whatever. And now everybody's trying to do it and it's like, oh, it's not the same because McGregor yeah. was like crazy yeah, and reckless yeah. and he, he was genuine about it. Now everybody's being fake about it and trying to get to that level he was at. But McGregor's one of one. There would never be another person yeah. like him as far as entertainment value goes. Mm -hmm. And Connor made most of his money off the Mayweather fight and his fucking proper 12. Yeah. You know, and I mean, bro, he didn't have a a very long reign in the UFC, but he he's didn't got, have like a prime UFC moment. But he's got like almost all the top ten UFC pay per view buys. He's on there. He's on like seven of ten of them, mm -hmm. and he like just his name was the UFC. Like if you thought UFC, you thought Conor McGregor. That's yep. it. It wasn't nobody else's. It was UFC Conor McGregor. That's it. 
Yeah, he had like a good, strong two years, like to fucking, like that. It was all about him. Yeah. And when he ma- when he had the Mayweather fight, like that was his peak. But that was also the beginning of like his downfall. The yeah. Yeah. Which I mean, no one else, no one can be that big for that long. Like you know what he other did, than Mayweather. Yeah, but like the the level that McGregor did it, bro. It was just so like it was just at a different level, bro. Yeah. And you can't do that shit forever. No. I mean, even Mayweather. I'm sure there was a point where Mayweather had three, four years where it was like, yo, this guy's nuts. After a while, I was like, okay, this guy don't get touched. Well, May- Mayweather really didn't do that much talking. Like mm-hmm. he did, he talked crap, but he didn't really do too much talking. Yeah. He was just cocky about his yeah. money. But even like Canelo now, like Canelo was like, oh, Canelo, Canelo. Now it's just like, like who's he gonna beat up now? Like he's yeah. just he got into the point where the hype is just over and he's just that guy. Yeah. Everybody already yeah. expects him to be. Yeah. For sure. But back to the like the fighters pay, it's just like uh you know, all these guys like they're noticing I mean Sugar Sean, bro, I'm sure he makes majority of his money like off sponsorships and uh like and then the UFC, you know? Yeah. But it's just like w- I think it's kinda also what the UFC should do is let UFC fighters have sponsors on their shorts and on their gear like how yeah. it used to be. Because they took that shit away. Oh, for real? Yeah, you remember yeah, back in the know. day they had all the shit on their shorts. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And their yeah. shirts when they would like do the in like rocking in and then uh, leaving like, like the post post view. Yeah, yeah, they had all these types of uh, brands on them, and I was like, bro, you guys need to let them do that again. Yeah, like get their sponsorship mm-hmm. and yeah. then get the money, and then that way you don't even gotta fucking pay them. Yeah, like they'll be happy. The only yeah. conflict that I think they run into is like. Maybe crypto or monster, they're like, hey, we we want to be exclusive. Like, we don't want the the fighters to show this other energy drink yeah, or yeah. or this other fucking uh crypto thing. Because that's what happened with Nungano. Nungano said that he got a million dollar like sponsorship offer. Like he got offered to it, but he couldn't do it because the UFC already had a collaboration with Crypto. dot com. Oh yeah, but that's yeah. And I would have been like, yo, that's. F-. And he's like, I wasn't getting no money from Crypto. dot com. Yeah, that's what he said. I was like, but I was gonna get like a multi million dollar deal with this other fucking cryptocurrency and i think it was binance but he mm-hmm. never said it publicly and um but i'm like bro like you guys like like how do you not expect him to not be uh upset i was like yeah. bro, you get a million dollar offer and you can't take it because you fucking are signed with crypto and i have no i get no money yeah out of that i'll be the same way bro honestly yeah. so that's that's a little bit of i guess logan paul in the ufc um, but I mean, the UFC is going to be great for a long time. Yeah, UFC is the UFC, bro. You see what Islam said about uh, the fight? He, about him and Vulcan? Yeah, he's like, he's like, bro, he's like, he's like, the UFC doesn't want to promote this fight. Dana White's not promoting this fight. And I'm like, damn, I really thought about it. And I was like, bro, that's so true. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about it. And I'm like, bro, that fight, I don't think, like, we have like literally two goats going at it. Yeah, it's going to be the fight of the year or fight of the probably over the past two it's or one, three years it's one of the most exciting has, fights that has been in the last exciting fight was probably connor and dustin dustin yeah you know and then like charles and islam like it's it's one of those type of fights right? yeah yeah it's like at that level where and it's not even being talked about yeah but and i'm like why that fight i don't even think it needs to be talked about though but but like you know but it, UFC, it should be being ufc talked does about. really good at promoting mm-hmm. and it's just like why are they not promoting this fight yeah what is it about it that Dana White or the UFC doesn't like about it? Yeah, because it's the top two pound for pound fighters. I don't see in the what's world. wrong with that. Like going, I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe they think it's going to promote itself because it really is. They're two different countries, nah, bro. But UFC promotes the shit out of stuff. Like they're really that good they, at it. Yeah, yeah. Like the Cyril Ghani and uh, John Jones fight. Yeah. I see that every day. Yeah, something promoting but, that fight every but day. But they were hyping up that John Jones and Nganu fight like before it was even before. Nungano came out and said he was retired. Yeah. And I really feel like that fight made him walk away from the UFC. Like, possibly. Because I'm sure he, they were going to fight. And Nungano was like, bro, this is literally going to be the biggest fight in the fucking UFC ever. Or like, probably literally top two. People between. have been waiting for John Jones to come. When's the last time he fought? Five plus the years only, ago? Six the years only ago? other fight I can think of was like, maybe, I'm not sure who fought, uh, like, maybe Anderson Silva versus St. Pierre, but I don't think that fight ever happened. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if that did, they ever fall. but if they did fight, I think it was the downfall of uh, Saint Pierre. Uh-huh. But I was like, that fight would have been crazy. We seen Connor and like Khabib fight, and then now we were yeah. gonna have John Jones and Nunganu fight, and it's just like, bro, that's one of like that's that's like watching fucking Mayweather and Canelo both at their primes fighting like that. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. that type of level of fight. Yeah, for sure. And then I bet Nunganu was like, 
yo, like, I got to get my bag, bro. Yeah, and you got to think, bro, like, there's How a many? lot of risk fighting John Jones. John Jones. Mm -hmm. Like, he is the greatest of all time. Like, mm -hmm. it's not really a question with anybody that he's the GOAT of the UFC. Uh, there's a lot of risk that come with fighting him, bro. There's mm -hmm. the possibility you're going to get slept, and you're the heavyweight champion of the world. Yeah. If you're going to get slept, you need to be getting paid. Because mm -hmm. there's a, like... The risk to reward just isn't. It's the reward has to outweigh the risk. Yeah, because um, John Jones is he's different. Yeah, I was he's just, just different. I was just saying real quick before I, I cut you off real quick. John uh, Anderson Silva and St. Pierre never fought. They yeah, wanted, that's what I they, they wanted to fight. But yeah, they never. That should have happened though. Yeah, but anyways, yeah, fighting John Jones or even fighting Nuganu like that's, eh, it's pretty hard to say that nobody that somebody somebody's probably going to get knocked the fuck out. Oh yeah, and yeah. I think that fight would have been really, really, really good. It would have been badass to have Volk and Islam and then John Jones and fucking Nunganu like the month after. Yeah. That yeah. It doesn't get better than that. UFC would have went nuts. Yeah, I mean that fight bro itself, it would have made so much money. Yeah. Pay per view buys. The hype would have been real as fuck. You had so much time to hype it up and and I think John Jones and uh Cyril Gunn's gonna be a good fight, but it ain't no fucking Nunganu. Nah. Nah. So yeah. We'll see. I'm more excited about this Islam and, and Volk fight. And I hate that it's not getting promoted. Like, when I noticed that, I was like, bro, this fight's next week. Is it? It's next Saturday. Oh, sh I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Oh, damn. Like, I don't see nothing about it. I did not know. I thought it was, like, in March or April. No, bro, it's next Saturday. Oh, I'm watching that for sure. Yeah, bro. But I'm just like, bro, that shit needs to get promoted. Yeah, I can't even predict the winner of that fight. <clears throat> I got Volk. But that's because I love Volk. I mean, I think I'm a fan of Volk. I I'm, I'm gonna say I think Volk's gonna win. Yeah, but yeah, but, it's but, good. but Islam said, I don't know if you saw this. That's the, what did he say? He He's said, a scary motherfucker, bro. He said everybody thinks all he can do is wrestle, so he's going to try to knock him out and not really wrestle as much. So I think wait, it's wait, who said that? Volk? Islam. Oh, Islam said that about Islam. Volk. No, Islam said that everybody thinks that all he can do is wrestle. Mm -hmm. Islam. That's all he's known for is his wrestling. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He comes from Khabib's, Khabib's yeah. camp, Khabib's world. They're yeah, wrestlers. Yeah. They're Russians. They're, they wrestle bears mm -hmm. in training. So he was like, I don't want to wrestle. I want to mm -hmm. knock him out so yeah. people know that I'm good in other areas other than just yeah. wrestling. That's why I think this fight's going to be so much better than people think it's going to be. Because oh, bro, it's, I hope it goes five rounds. Islam's going to get out of his comfort zone mm -hmm. and try to stand up a lot more than usual. Yeah. But that's also how I think he gets caught. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll but, uh, talk about that more next I week. I saw Islam and Volk. They were like in a, on a live video call. And, and, and Islam was like, um, he's like, you, he's like, you Australian. He's like, who, who's from Australia and knows wrestling? Nobody. Yeah. He was just talking shit about the wrestling. <laughs> that is and then Volk, true, and Volk was like, he's like, I'm the world champion from Australia. And I was like, ooh, it's cold. That, yeah. That's a cold yeah. answer to say, you know? Yeah. And, um, and it's pretty interesting to see because Volk obviously has to deal with the wrestling. And and Islam has to just make sure that maybe his I don't know we I guess his wrestling does work I don't know we'll see we'll yeah. talk more about the fight next week yeah for sure but um yeah that fight's going to be exciting and like I said it's probably not getting as promoted as much so yeah I didn't know it was next yeah. week so obviously it's not getting promoted enough because I usually know when these fights are so yeah but um I guess well let's talk a little bit about the playoffs that happened this past weekend um. And then we obviously with Super Bowl next week, Pro Bowl this week. Two weeks. Oh, it's not this. It's not next Sunday. Uh, Super Bowl is February fifteenth. Mm, that doesn't sound right. The fifteenth on the Wednesday because I don't oh. the fourteenth on Tuesday. Today's the third. It's it's next week, bro. Because this week's the Pro Bowl. This week is this mm -hmm. Sunday. Mm -hmm. Like tomorrow. Or? Yeah. Two days from now. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, that that's that's how it is. Let's see. Uh, NFL Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Nah, bro. No, it is next week. It, the it 12. is. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Yeah. yeah, so we'll talk about that next week. But anyways, <coughs> uh, the Eagles beat San Francisco, uh, the, and the Kansas City Chiefs beat the Cincinnati Bagels. Uh, we'll talk about the San Francisco and Eagles game. The Eagles just fucking destroyed them, but San Francisco had a bad shit luck, bro. Bro, they had the... Bro, like, I think the Eagles would have won that game no matter what. Yeah, for sure. But the, the 49ers, they're... Back up, Brock Purdy gets hurt. Third string. Yeah. First first quarter? Or I, I think it was first quarter because when got, I started watching it, he wasn't on the field no more. Yeah, he got hurt early. And then their second, their backup quarterback 
to their third string. Fourth string. Got hurt in the third quarter yep. with a concussion. Brock Purdy went in a couple more times. Third string got hurt before halftime, bro. Yeah. Oh, did he? Yeah. But they didn't have a quarterback. Christian McCaffrey and their tight ends, good, 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 or whatever I know, his name is. Chris, uh, Christian McCaffrey was, he threw, he had a few snaps. Yeah, was playing quarterback. And they weren't doing like a, Christian McCaffrey, when he played quarterback, they weren't really throwing the ball. It was like a wildcat, a wildcat yeah. formation. Like he was just snapping it, running it, yeah. snapping it. I'm like, bro, like I understand. But once Brock Purdy got hurt, I feel like the whole momentum of the game just shifted. Yeah, because I mean, you're in a fucking playoff mode atmosphere. Yeah. And to have something like that, bro, it definitely throws you off your game. Yeah. It has I, to. I was like, bro, and I did put a little money on the Niners. Not a lot, but. Mm-hmm. Um, to win? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I still think the Eagles probably would have won that game, but yeah. you also never know because that yeah. your quarterback who's been carrying the momentum, not like mm-hmm. carrying the team, but the momentum. I think they were about 11 wins or 12 wins. Uh, I, think, I think it was like 9 or 10 with yeah. Brock Purdy. Um, mm-hmm. It's like, bro. Like that kind of kills your whole moment from the fans, from the players. They're like, damn, Brock Purdy's been like, you're we're, playing we're, away. Ri- we're riding a wave right now. Like, you're playing away. And yeah. Then, and then you're so. playing away. Like, I think that changed the momentum because it yeah. was really close at first. Yeah. Um, and then the Eagles just kind of took off. And then after that, it was like, whatever. But yeah. Uh yeah, it made it made me sad, bro, because I really wanted to see Chris McCaffrey get a Super Bowl. Yeah. <clears throat> for obvious reasons. But. Eagles are, they're good. Yeah, and um, just to say, like, I think it's funny because you made this uh, video and people were commenting after the game, like on the clips when they got to see the clip, I guess, that they were just like, like, oh, number one defense or blah, blah, blah. Like, that's Which all I see. Which yeah, they 49ers are. 49ers were the number one mm-hmm. defense, yeah. I'm pretty sure <coughs> some of it had to do with the, the quarterback being hurt throwing them off their game. Yeah. But, um. Like, yeah, uh, and it's funny because I, I told you, I was like, bro, and I said it on the podcast, I was like, hey, bro, it's going to be like 30 to 10. Yeah, and, and it was now. 30, 30, well, you said 31 to 10, it was yeah. 31 to 9. Yeah, and I was like right score. on there. Yeah. And um, no, I didn't fucking think the quarterback was going to get hurt. Yeah, but I feel like it would have been closer if yeah. that wouldn't have been Yeah, no, case, for sure. I think yeah. it probably would have been like. Maybe a two touchdown game instead of a three touchdown I don't think, game. Uh, nah, I don't know if the Eagles still would have been put 30, maybe uh, like 24, 25. Because I don't think. Dude, you got the 49ers defense was on the field so much more than they would have been if Brock Purdy wouldn't have got yeah. hurt. So they wouldn't have been as, as tired, tired, as gassed. Like mm. there was a there's so many different things yeah. that played into that game that just yeah. It was yeah, it was all against 49ers. Yeah. Um, and 49ers. then uh Kansas City. Well, I guess back to, well real quick we'll wrap up the Eagles thing. But anyways, I think Jalen Hurts is a beast, bro. I yeah. think he's so underrated and unappreciated. But I will say he did not do shit that game. He didn't. He threw 120 yards, mm-hmm. ran for very little. Like, yeah. he did nothing that game. I just want to point that out. But he didn't have to do many things. No, he didn't have to do much. Yeah. But um, it it was surprising that the score was as lopsided because you would have thought, like, oh, my God, the Super Bowl probably balled out. Or the, yeah, the, the quarterback, quarterback probably balled out. Mm-hmm. But you look at his stats, you're like, did he even play the whole game? Yeah. Like, he threw but 120 he, yards. He did good, though. He, like, he, no, did, he did the job he needed to do. Yeah. So. Their run, their runs were very. I was surprised yeah. by how well they ran the ball too. Like so, yeah. I'm I'm super excited for them to to see them in the Super Bowl. But then we'll talk about Kansas City um, Chiefs. I mean Kansas City and uh, Bigles. Cincinnati Bengals. So people are saying that game was rigged. rigged. Absolutely, you think so? I yeah. didn't watch that game. Yeah, I watched part of it. Uh, the main part that I think is rigged is there was a third down play. Mm-hmm. Where Joe Burrow was pressured yeah. heavily, and he got oh, hit he threw the ball right through the ball He's intentional grounding intentional grounding. The very next drive, Patrick Mahomes did the exact same thing. Was being pressured, yeah, through the ball, no call. Mm. So I'm like, bro, yeah. like it 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 was a game changer. And then the last play of the when she or. The Bengals turned over the ball on downs yeah. or whatever. The Chiefs got it, and then they got called for roughing the passer or, or something or um, something where they yeah. the guy hit Patty Mahomes out of bounds, mm-hmm. fifteen yard penalty. I was like, bro, come come on, bro. Yeah, like I don't think that was the right call. But anyways, there was it was I think it was definitely rigged. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's a narrative that the NFL was trying to fit with, uh, not to bring race into it, but the first two black quarterbacks to ever start. 
against oh, each other yeah. in the Super Bowl. Two brothers for the first time playing in the Super Bowl together mm-hmm. or against each other. It makes a good headlines. Um, Andy Reid won a Super Bowl with the Eagles. Oh, I didn't know that part. Yeah, Andy Reid was the coach for the Eagles for the longest, and now he's with the Chiefs. When did he win the Super Bowl with the Eagles? It uh, had to be early in his like. It was early in yeah. his career. Like he 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 was with the Eagles for a minute, or maybe I don't know if he won the Super, but he went to the Super Bowl with the Eagles for oh, sure. Oh, really? And now he's with the Chiefs, so it's like Andy Reid's playing his old team. Yeah. There's so many narratives. Well, that's good headlines. No, it, it makes that's what sense. I'm saying. It's yeah. really good for the NFL to do it like that. Good but, press, yeah. Uh, I also don't think it's fair to yeah. the Bengals, bro, because I just think the Bengals are a better team. I think they're the best team in the league, in my personal opinion. Now, but. all I, have, I didn't watch the game, but knowing that it was that close, I think the Bengals could have done enough to get, like, to close the gap on yeah. being rigged or not. Mm-hmm. I definitely think like any on all sports, including UFC, like it's going to favor somebody always. Oh yeah, you know. But and I, I'm always one of those people like, oh, the ref should have called this. The ref. Like, okay, the game was literally maybe the game. How did that game end? Twenty three ten or twenty one? Twenty one twenty or twenty one twenty three twenty. Twenty three twenty. Right, so the field goal. Yeah, field goal. Uh, that, that's pretty fucking close game. You know? That's how all their games are. Yeah. They're always about three points. So it's like that's a fifty fifty game. Now, on this side, you got headlines like a motherfucker, mm-hmm. and you can make a good Super Bowl. This guy, you got Joe Burrow, decent headlines, whatever. Yeah. Who are you going to fucking pick? You know what I'm saying? Like, I think yeah. that's kind of what it came down to it. And I hate to say that, you know, but, you know, same thing with like when, uh, like Canelo Triple G, the first fight, you know, they were neck. It was a pretty close fight. Yeah. I think Triple G won that fight. But I was like, well, eh, who, like you know, Canelo brings in more money. He's gonna be. He lives in this country. He stays in this state. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Same thing with UFC. They do. I mean, they all fucking do it. You know. Yeah. It's so, but it does suck to see like the injustice. You know. In, yeah. In the I'm just sport. mad, bro. Because I, I like Patty Mahomes. I wanted to see, but I wanted Joe Burrow. I, I want, want Joe Burrow to win. I think he's gonna win one. He has to win one before he, he will. Uh, you know, because I think he's. I think I think he's the best quarterback in the league. That's yeah. just. Very unpopular opinion. Most people think Patty Mahomes. I think it's I think close, it's Patty Mahomes. But Joe Burrow is just... Do you so, got to think, bro. I mean, it is impressive that Joe Burrow made a Super Bowl last season and he almost did it this season again. Yeah, being his, his first two real seasons. This is what his... I think this is... No, I think this is his third season. This is right? third, but his first season, he was hurt the whole yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. So this is his basically yeah. his second season. His second season. Going to the Super Bowl, but, your first two seasons. But this is... Carrying the Bengals team that was notorious for not winning ever. Yeah. Like, bro... Yeah, yeah, no, it's pretty badass what he's done. It's also pretty badass. Well, the Kansas City already had momentum when Patty Mahomes. Yeah, when it was when, our, when Patty Mahomes came in, uh, Alex, Alex Smith, Smith was. I loved him, bro. He, bro, he was a beast. He was dogging with the. Yeah. They were like, they were good. Yeah, they made it Alex to Smith. the the what are they called the, I don't know what division they're in, but they made it to the divisional finals. Yeah. So. Pat, uh, the Kansas City was already becoming a dominant team when yeah. Patty Mahomes took over, and he was basically like the cherry on top. Yeah, Joe yeah. Burrow took over a very bad team like they had andy dalton bro yeah they weren't doing nothing mm-hmm. and joe bro his first real year in took him to super bowl what she's like, crazy all right bro it's like lebron taking that his first Cavs team to, or to the finals yeah so it's like what but anyways uh he's excited i mean it was cool to see that i mean joe bro has a long career ahead of him as long as he stays healthy yeah patty mahomes does too but it'll be excited to see a team like Kansas City face the Eagles. I don't want to give any predictions or any more about it because we'll save that for next week. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> both games are uh, well. The I don't know. Were the games good? The Eagles 49ers game wasn't good. Yeah. Uh, the, the Chiefs fourth- Bengals game. I don't think it was that good, bro. No. It wasn't I don't, as good as it should have been. I think it should have been a shootout. The weekend before would like were better games, right? Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, absolutely. Okay. But anyway, so that was that. Um, Tom Brady finally retired. Yeah, uh, I think finally. this. I for think good. I think he's, he's done. I think he's, he's done, done for good. Yeah. I think he's ready to walk away. You could tell after this year, bro. He's done with football. Yeah. Like, so, um, I mean, he, go, he's, he's the he's, goat. He's the goat. There's football. no. There's not even an argument anymore. Yeah. Like so, yeah, that he's the goat. So someone like you know Patty Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, they gotta will, go win a whole bunch of Super Bowls if they want to be that guy and throw a lot of yards and yeah. play a lot of years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. so. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'm really uh, happy for Tom Brady. It's going to suck not watching him play. Yeah. Like seeing it, like not suck, but it's going to be weird. Yeah. Not seeing his name. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's, 
it's t- the time has come, bro. And for and sure, I mean, man, uh, it's been over twenty years. Uh, we're greatly. Uh, how do you say? Like, just appreciated that you know I got to live. Glad I got to witness it. Yeah, yeah, that we lived in a time where like you know our our kids or our grandkids are gonna be like, "Who's Tom Brady?" I'm like, "Well, let me fucking tell you, man. This goat. guy was the goat. Mm, is the goat. You know." So we'll see. Um, but that's kind of the end of the show. Next week we got a few things to talk about. We got NFL. We got the Super Bowl. We got UFC. We got some uh, NBA possible breaking record. Uh, so I mean, next week's gonna be probably like a, most of it's gonna be sports. sports. It's UFC, gonna be a sports. football, basketball for sure. Yeah. Um. So stay tuned for that, guys. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you subscribe or follow us or download us if you're listening. Support the channel. Show some love. We much appreciate it. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Yeah.